Hey, everybody. Welcome to Take Off with John Clark. And we've got a special guest here. We're a little over a month away or maybe a month away from Eagles training camp. But Miles Sanders is doing something really cool. He is going to have his first football camp for kids. We're putting up the information right here, right now, so you can see how to participate and get to Miles Sanders football camp. We're going to talk about that in a second. Miles, I first want to ask you, where did it first start in your mind that you wanted to have a, a football camp for kids? Uh, since I well, since since I got into the to the NFL, to be honest, it's just freeing out the. I didn't want to rush into it, um, and because I want to, you know, build on getting a foundation going on and stuff like that. But uh, we we started off uh, like I, I told you before we got on here. Um, we started off our Pittsburgh the Pros camp last year. Uh, that's with me, Demar Hamlin, Kenny uh, Kenny Robinson, uh, Paris Ford, and Kelly Hudson. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we we started off like that last year. That was our first time, all of us doing like a camp for the city. So, and then we had another. We did the second annual camp uh, this past weekend, plus a celebrity kickball game, which brought a lot of people out. Uh, and then we had a, a football high school all star game right after that too. So it was a it was a it was a great weekend, honestly. I had smiles all over my face all weekend, just seeing how many kids came out and so much, seeing how much love the city showed us. But um, yeah, that 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 camp, well, my own camp, that's, that finally clicked in my head. I was like, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll I might do it this year. So and to do it on the field that I pl- actually played on, and and uh, it sold out in an hour. So I had to get more. I had to put more spots to just to get as much kids in as I could. And I I, I can't wait. I'm excited. That's awesome. We're going to get into a little bit more of that. I first wanted to ask you about going into this season. Do you set goals for yourself, uh, personal goals and team goals? Uh, yeah, I do, but um, not not really to talk about them. Uh, just keep them keep them tucked in in my pocket, and whatever happens, happens. You know. Do you write them down? Uh, no, it's in my head. It's in my head. You know, I always got something that I want to do in my head, but. Just trying to win the Super Bowl, honestly. Are you where you want to be in your career as far as what you've done so far and, and where you want to go? Are, you've got that in your mind? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, one of the my biggest awards, honestly, that I want to win is the walk of pain. That's what that's what doing these camps and, and the stuff for the kids is for. So you want to win the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award? Absolutely. Absolutely. That will be, be a blessing. Absolutely. Is that more important for you than football accolades? Right now, yeah. Right now, yeah. Where did you get that feeling inside of you and in your mind that you wanted to, to um, do all this and, and try to be a Walter Payton Man of the Year? Um, watch just simply watching guys like Malcolm, Malcolm Jenkins. I had a great, you know what I'm saying, for doing stuff like that. Malcolm Jenkins is perfect for that. Um, picked his brain a little bit, but, um, just watching him and watching the stuff that he does for the community and for as not just the community, but for, um, uh, like politics and stuff like he, he's in talking to, uh, police officers, lawyers, judges, you know, trying to, you know, make this country better in, in, in his own and with his with his platform and just seeing all the type of stuff that he does. Um, yeah, I, I look up to all that and guys like LeBron, like all that stuff. Like I, I love seeing stuff like that, using their platform and doing what they can and taking the full advantage of it. So that would be more important to you, the Walter Payton Man of the Year, than like, say, a Pro Bowl? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Honestly. Is there some influence from your mom or any family member or people other than maybe Malcolm and Rodney McLeod and guys like that? Um, really just um, grow, I'm growing up. Um, I'm watching how the world is, the country is, you know, um, just trying to help in my way with my platform and trying to create change in some way. And that the only way I know how to do that is with the youth. Uh, that's the newest generations coming up always. So you got to start with the youth. You got to change their mentality. You got to change the way they think in some ways by just showing them 
you could do it in, in a different way. Um, you know, I don't know, just just trying to give these these kids a a, a bigger picture when when they see guys like me or or anybody else. Because I remember being one of those kids when I was young and looking up to football players like they're superheroes, you know, and wanting to do everything they wanted to do. So uh, I just remember being a kid. When you were growing up in Pittsburgh, looking back to be at the spot you are now in your life, how gratifying is it and how proud are you of yourself? And, and looking back, what were some of the things and obstacles that you had to overcome in adversity to kind of keep going and get to this spot? Uh, honestly, I'm super proud of myself. Um, I, I don't think I've ever said that out loud, but I'm, I'm super proud of myself. Um, I don't think I give myself enough. I think I'm too hard on myself, honestly. But the I'm not going to say I had it too hard. My mom did a great job of uh, making sure everything was cool. But the city of Pittsburgh isn't uh, a friendly city. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in a lot of situations. Uh, making wrong decisions is very easy to do that. The city's so small. But I can't, I can't eat. You know, I've seen too many players like me, guys like me, um, you know, try sports or whatever, being good at it, get offers and then throw it away by making a mistake. You know, um, all the, I've seen it too many times in this in, in my cities to the point I it's, it's I can't even count on both of my fingers. So either either dead or in jail or just not doing nothing. So and I refuse to be. I refused to be that. Um, once I figured out I was getting offers and and stuff like that, when I figured out I can make my, I don't have to let my mom pay for college. Uh, I, I just knew. I said I'm going to do whatever I, I have to do to get to be an NFL football player. I, I knew I was going to be an NFL football player because I wasn't going to let anybody or anything get in front of me to get to that get to that point. And like I said, the big word is sacrifice. You got to. My mom sacrificed everything her whole life to make sure me and my two brothers are at where we're at today. So, um, so that's what I do. I learned it from my mom, the sacrifice part. You're an amazing success story. And there's a lot of kids who look up to you. Was there ever a time where you did get caught up in some of that stuff? And then you had to say to yourself, wait a second, I, I can't go down this path. Uh, no, no, I, I, I was really just learning off other people's mistakes. Um, I don't, yeah, that's, that's the only way I could say. Um, I never really had anything that it was just like, whoa, I gotta, I mean, I've been around it, but it's, that's just the city of Pittsburgh. You're always around that type of stuff. It's just being outside is becoming more and more dangerous. And, you know, just trying to figure out a way to keep these kids busy and out the streets. That's just simple like that. Did you have a camp? that you went to growing up or an experience like that or a mentor or a football player you looked up to that really helped guide you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I grew up, uh, I'm sorry, Philly, but I grew up as a Steelers fan. Um, and the Steelers were always winning and, you know, um, we had their 30 years back then in the seventies or eighties or, or whatever, but still growing up, you know, when we had big Ben, um, he he, brought, he went to three Super Bowls. In my in my, you know what I'm saying, so they the, the Steelers were always winning, and uh, they always had camps. Uh, guys like I always went to the training camp in Latrobe that they had, it. and um, guys like Hines Ward, uh, Jerome Bettis, um, not even just Steelers players, but uh, guys that went to my high school, uh, Steve Breston, Ryan Mundy, um, they would have camps. Like I just remember just watching. Just remember being a kid and just thinking that a football player is a superhero. I mean, you know, and that's all it is. It's just seeing that. And then when you're actually interacting with them, you know, asking them what their name is, you know, uh, are you having fun? Just all the, just the little stuff that that thing that matters to them the most, uh, I'm telling you. And then when you hear the feedback for the parents and they tell you that we love how nice you are with the kids, how interactive you are with the kids, that's that's genuine. You know, because I genuinely want to see these kids smile. I genuinely want to see these kids grow up and, and do something with themselves. I don't want to see nobody, you know, in the streets making bad decisions. This, 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 this. We got to start with the youth if we want change. That's basically what I'm trying to say. You as a pro athlete 
I can see it from time to time, but on a daily basis, there's so many people that recognize you, kids that recognize you, and kids want autographs or pictures or something like that. Sometimes you're just tight for time. Do you ever kind of think back when a, a kid's asking you for something like maybe just a quick conversation or an autograph or something? Do you ever go back to when you were a little kid kind of looking up to those football players and what that moment would mean? Absolutely. I'm, I'm so fat. The kids, no, I don't, I can't say no to no kids, even when I'm, you know, every football player or, or athlete or famous person knows this feeling when you're signing out autographs and, uh, you know, you don't really care because it's the kids, but, you know, your media people are on your back, like, all right, all right, a couple more. I'm like, bro, I'm, I can't say no to these kids. Maybe the grown, the, the adults I'll say no to, but the kids can't, I can't say no because they've been, they've been waiting for this opportunity their whole life. How about your mom? Cause she was such a great influence on you and you guys are so close when you have conversations after games or things like that, you said you're really tough on yourself. How is your mom with you? Does she point out little things about the game or something like that? Or is that just you? Sometimes, sometimes, but it's, it's, it's not nowhere near as much as how, how I do it. I, I think I have a bad game all the time sometimes. So <laughs> I'm just, that's just me trying to, I want to be the best, so that's just how how I, I make myself think. Like, okay, don't ever get comfortable. There's always room to get better, and that's just me, though. But, yeah, my mom sometimes, sometimes wouldn't. Yeah, sometimes. I'm looking at your statistics, 5.1 yards per carry for your career so far, and you look at the all-time list. I mean, Jim Brown is 5.2 yards a carry, and then you're right there with Nick Chubb and Aaron Jones as far as guys in the game now. Um, when you look at wanting to be the best, what is it you think you have to get better at to be the best? Uh, um, well, being consistent, being more consistent. Um, and I'm going to be honest, opportunities. I'll just say something like that. I need to be more consistent, but I need opportunities. You need more opportunities. So. How about when you look at greatness, um, is it also the way you carry yourself uh, and, and leadership and things like that? Do you look at that as well? Um, yeah, in a way. Uh, my way of, of being a leader is um, I'm working on being more vocal, but uh, I like to just show with actions. Uh, I, I grew up, uh, if you want change, you got to show with action, you know, all this time talking doesn't I was never really a, a talker growing up so I didn't even like talking in class when you had presentations you know I was always that kid coming to the teacher like can I please do this another way I'm nervous I you know just that but I gotten 10 times more better and um yeah just uh as far as leadership yeah just try to show show with um <laughs> show with uh with, with actions I love seeing your uh, your niece there. Uh, would would you describe yourself growing up? Were you shy, and how did you kind of get to that's, dealing with all of us in the media and kind of let your personality out a little bit? Yeah, I was definitely definitely shy, super shy. Um, like I said, like the media never. I never really had a problem with talking in front of the cameras. It was always physically talking in front of people. You know, getting the live reactions, and you know, I don't know. It just drove me crazy. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm 10 times better at it. Uh, I still don't like talking, but, um, but no, it's, it's something that you just grow into, especially in the NFL and with the Philly media. You know, it's funny, it's funny with fantasy football. Um, how often do you get people, fans, kids, whatever, coming up on the street or wherever you are asking you to do something for fantasy? Uh, look, man. Uh, I can't. I can't. Fantasy football. Um, I don't care about it. <laughs> I honestly don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> I can't give you the points you guys want if I don't. You know. Uh, so that's how I feel about fantasy football. So you're gonna keep getting two to three points if you know. That's that's how our offense is, man. Don't Gotta get that ball. Fantasy. Yeah, don't don't pick me up on fantasy no more. I'll just say that. I, I, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so 
How about catching the ball? Have you really, really worked on catching the ball out of the backfield as well? Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, um, I can still catch. Um, like I said, it's just opportunities. Um, so just leave that there. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to be used more? Uh, I would love to. I mean, my rookie year didn't happen for no reason. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. You set all kinds of Eagles rushing records to all purpose yards uh, in your rookie year. Um, when you think about where you came from and then go to Penn State, how often do you and Saquon Barkley kind of look at each other's stats, what each of you are doing, and is there friendly competition with you guys in the NFL? Yeah. Um, I can say recently it's just we all got it. We all got it. We got a little silent day um, that I never told him about, but only me and him know. Uh, there's some money involved, but <laughs> but that's just our competitive nature. And, and, and the type of bet it is, we just know what type of players we are and we know what we can do. So, but yeah, um, that's my dog, man. Uh, he's coming off of adversity just like me. So we've just built different. I know he's going to have a great season and I know I'm going to have a great season. It's just play each other twice a year and you play for them at dang blue and red team, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, I love that dude, man. It's all love, all competitive love and stuff for uh, yeah, I just hope and pray that he has a great season. And I'll see him I'll see him in MetLife and in, in the link. So is the bet for this coming season? Oh, it's every season. It's a big bet. <laughs> it's every season. It can happen at any moment. Oh, That's so it. it's getting to a certain point. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a bet where it's an award where you can win any year. Just know that it's a big award. So who's closer? I don't know. We got to see. We got to see, man. It takes a lot to get that award, man. So we want to see. Is this a, is this a large amount of money or? Uh, it's a decent amount of money. It's a decent amount of money. A I amount. like this. I like this. <laughs> that adds some juice to these Eagles Giants games. Yeah, yeah. That, we made this bet since we got, since we both were in the NFL. So as soon as I got, I said, hey, man, what's up? So it's, it can happen anymore. If it don't happen, then none of, none of us have, have it. You gotta give each other money, so. <laughs> so it's still hanging out there, huh? But yeah, yeah, it's still hanging out there. Nice. Um, when you have this football camp, um, July 10th, on the very field where you played your high school football, and we talked about the kids looking up to you, how much does that put a smile on your face when you see all these kids and how much they want to learn from you and the fact that you kind of give them that push and a path to becoming who they want to be and finding themselves? Um, I just, honestly, I just want to be, like I said, I just want to be the motivation. That's all I ever want to be to anybody at any age. Um, just be motivation. Uh, when, when, it, when a camp comes, uh, I'll have some, I'm going to have somebody else speak to that does a lot of public speaking, but I'm going to definitely say my, what I want. They say what I have to say too, but uh, what I want them to leave with is just, yeah, you're going to have the talent to get to where you want to be. First of all, you got to graduate high school. Um, no matter how talented you are in high school, um, you have to have the grades to get into school. You have to. That's for every D2, D1, D3, anything. You have to have the grades. And I didn't see too many players like me people like me in this city that I'm from just fold and just, it's more, I can't even count on my fingers. Um, it's just too many. And I just always, I see people do stuff and I just do the opposite. I just, it's never that guy to just fall into, you know, whatever everybody else was doing. So, um, so I'll just give the information. Uh, you can check out Miles Sanders and his mom, Marlene Sanders. It is the inaugural Miles Sanders Youth Football Camp, and it is at his iconic football stadium, stadium in Woodland Hills. It is Sunday, July 10th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And how special is it that it's your mom that's doing it with you? Uh, she, well, she, she does. It's obviously special, and I like the fact it's just been me and her. Um, 
we we've been doing a lot of stuff together since I got since I got in the league and uh, just trying to do so much for the community and uh our business and all type of stuff. She she's she's my right hand right now and uh she's just doing everything together. Does she ever uh say anything about any celebrations or anything? Does she ever say anything about what you're wearing when you arrive at the games, anything like that? Uh no. She she loves the way I dress. Um she loves the touchdown dances, all that type of stuff. So she loves she loves who I am and, and how I handle myself. And so you probably wouldn't do anything unless it makes your mom proud. Am I right? Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is really, really cool. Uh, the first annual Miles Sanders Youth Football Camp. Um, looking forward to it. And you're still accepting uh, kids, right? You're, you're, you're growing it. Mm, no, nah, they're, they're closed now. They're what? closed now. Every spot's uh, take it. I, look, it sold out in the same day. And then I, I put 50 more spots and then I sold out too. So yeah, it's, it's packed now. <laughs> it's it's only one watch. of me, guys. It's only one <laughs> of me. I can't have like 600 kids. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, but nah. <laughs> well, as I wrap this up, it's fascinating to me because I, I see some guys who come into the league and they're making money and they want to spend all that money. They want to have the parties. They want to, you know, do all the wild stuff. How is it you have grown up so much in these three years here to where you're really looking at society, you're looking at kids in society, and, and you're so much, you have so much of a bigger scope here about, about helping people? Well, I mean, it's the internet. I mean, if, if, you, if you see what's going on on the internet, not even, I can't even say the news no more. Like, if, if you see what's going on the internet in this world and in this country, like, you you see what you see the problem and a lot of stuff don't sit right with me what's going on so I'm just trying to do whatever I can um because yeah just focus on the youth man that's the only thing that's going to change everything is this youth these new generations coming up so that's all I'm trying to do I hate to ask you because you have so many years left but are you already like thinking about or have something in your mind about what you want to do when your career is over? Um, just keep, keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I don't think anybody will see me on TV anymore, uh, but um, I'm big in real estate and, and doing whatever, uh, you know, doing whatever I can for the kids. Like uh, my big pictures is shot at daycares, uh, preschool, anything. Uh, I, I want to do something like how, how LeBron did uh, make his own public school, you know, with free tuition. Like there's not a lot, there's nobody really doing stuff like that. And tuition is expensive, uh, you know? So like just trying to do all this, like everything that these guys with all this money is doing, I, I want to do it too. Miles, I'm impressed. I, I didn't know a lot of this. So this is great to learn about you more. Um, and hey, I, I do think you could have a, a little bit of, a little bit of a job in the media if you want it when you're done, <laughs> when you talk this openly. So we always love dealing with you. We wish you the best this year. And it is the Miles Sanders football camp, July 10th. Uh, this is a special thing. So we appreciate you sharing it with us. And good luck, not only on the football field, but hopefully one day Walter Payton Man of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Don. Appreciate you, Miles. Thanks for the time. Thank you.